Slippery salmon. Slippery salmon. You can bake it, you can smoke it, it's a flavorful dish. From the freshwater rocks to a life in the sea. That slippery salmon is the fishy for me. Hello everybody who's joining us. Welcome to this online field trip. I am Sam and this is Stephen, our guide for today. Hello Stephen. Hi. Hi, how are you? Now we are somewhere very special indeed today because behind us is the beautiful North Atlantic Sea. And the reason why we're here is because we're on the island of Mull, which is in the west of Scotland. And we're here today to learn all about salmon and Stephen's going to help us do just that. So Stephen, can you tell us a bit more about where we are? We are, as you say, on the, the west coast of Scotland, on the Isle of Mull. Um, we have on the backdrop here, Loch Nakeel, which is a seawater loch. And to our left, we have uh, the hatchery where our salmon production cycle starts. Fantastic. So we're going to take a good look around there, aren't we? Yes, oh yes. Yeah. Um, so why is uh, Scotland so good for uh, farming salmon? Just uh, everything about Scotland and, and the waters around Scotland, are, are certainly on the west coast, are just perfect for growing salmon. We have uh, perfect water temperatures. You know, it's not too cold in the, in the winter. It's not too warm in the summer. So it's just perfect for growing fish, strong currents uh, and so calm seas generally for the best part. Yeah, it's very, very calm here today. It's yes, so it is, yeah. lovely here. Um, is it true that um, Scotland is the only place in the UK that we farm salmon? That is correct, yeah. We, we're producing about 8% of the, the sort of global production of Scottish salmon, or of salmon, I should say. And, uh, but there, there's many other countries that, that yeah. do it as well. Well, which countries do um, produce salmon well, as well? The main one uh, be Norway. Norway is producing about 56% of uh, of the salmon production, and then there's countries like Ireland and Chile, uh, America, you know, and Canada. There's yeah, there's, there's quite a few now. And is that because those areas have just calm water yeah. and the perfect temperature? Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's the one thing that we that we look at before we'd say a, a farm is is just that all these conditions are are just right for it. Fantastic. What's your role here then, Stephen? My role here, I, I'm a, a, an area manager. I, I look after many farms on the, on the west coast of Scotland, uh, basically just making sure that the, the standards that uh, everybody expects and the quality of the fish is, is just prime. Yeah, perfect. So you're the man in charge. I am the man in charge. <laughs> <laughs> you're the perfect person to be guiding us today. So well, what are we going to learn while we're here? Well, what we're going to learn today, we're going to see what's uh, what's happening on the farm and the, the different cycles uh, that the, the salmon go through you know and how we deal with the, far the fish on the farm and uh, where they go after they leave the farm Great. you know and obviously uh, so we want to know why they're so good to eat, uh, good for us to eat you know? yeah so. exactly so really the whole process from the moment that they're they're laid, the eggs yep, all from the way egg. through. It's yep. going to be great, it really is. Let's find out who we have uh, taking part today, who we have joining us. Let's first of all go over to Park School Federation in Mansfield, where Miss Chapman's class is joining us today. Hello, children. Hello. <laughs> great to have you all taking part. You sound nice and loud as well, which is what we love. Let's go to Wood Green Junior School now in West Midlands, where Miss Passmore's class is taking part. Hello, children. Great to have you all taking part. Hello, Stephen. Hello, Stephen. Hello, Stephen. Hello, Stephen. Oh. You're getting a special Hello. mention. Hello, thank you. <laughs> and let's go to Larchwood Primary School in Brentwood, where Mrs. Menzies' class is taking part today with us. Hello, everybody. Hello, children. <laughs> Fabulous stuff. And finally, let's go to the Avenue Primary School in Middlesbrough, where Mr. Pennock's class is taking part. Hello, children. Oh. Hello, Mr. Pennock. <laughs> great go. stuff. It's really great to have you all watching and learning with us today. I think, first of all, Stephen, we need to um, clear this up because am I right in thinking that salmon um, they're quite unique as a fish because they spend some of their life in freshwater and some of their life in seawater. Is that right? That, that is correct. Uh, 
generally you have fish that will either be in salt water mm -hmm. or they'll be in fresh water but uh, salmon are unique in the fact that they've adapted to to both both climates yeah and that's um, true in the fa in the same factors like it's wild salmon and the salmon that are farmed here they both do that do yes, they? yes that, that's correct yeah we try to to mimic as much uh, or as as close as possible uh, the farm to to how they would uh, they would be in the wild yeah fabulous so why do we farm salmon because you know, I think, well, there's fuck. Surely you go out with your fishing net and you catch a salmon, don't yeah, you? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. No, unfortunately, the last for the last 60 years, the the wild stocks have been declining. So, uh, to enable us all to to get to to be able to eat salmon, we we have to farm it. You know, if 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 we were to eat wild fish solely or solely salmon, uh, they'd become extinct. Yeah. Which we so. wouldn't want that to happen. No, absolutely not. So, so it's quite only been a number of, a short number of years that we have been farming salmon for. Well, yeah, it's salmon. The salmon industry is, is very young. You know, it's 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 forty like forty years old. You know, and comparable to the likes of uh, cattle for beef and pork from pigs. You know, and chickens. You know, they they've been farmed for thousands of years for for people to eat. So. Uh, yeah, very, very young indeed. So it's all new, but it's great yeah. it's happening because we obviously want to keep salmon in well, abundance. Well, that's right. Yes, we do. We oh. do, definitely. Oh. Yeah, and we can serve the wild stocks, which is <laughs> even better. Well, yeah. children, obviously, um, Stephen is our expert today, but I know that we do have some budding experts out there because you've been using all the information and resources that we have on our website to learn a bit more about salmon before today's online field trip. So I think we should put you to the test. So let's go over to Park School Federation now and see if Miss Chapman can tell us some of the things you've learned this week on the run up to this uh, online field trip. Um, Aladdin is the name of the newly hatched sal salmon. That's a really, really good fact. Um, so Alavin is the name of a newly hatched salmon. Is that that is right? absolutely correct. Yes, the Alvin is uh, is the stage after after they've hatched the Alvin and they remain Alvin for eight weeks before great. they go on to the next stage. And so. we're going to see some later on. We are on, going aren't to we? see some later on. Yes, great stuff. Really good, good, good fact there. Let's get another fact. A sa a salmon hatchery is where salmon are raised from eggs to young fish. Oh, fabulous. What a lovely, great fact there. So the salmon hatchery is where salmon are raised from eggs to young fish. Yes, yeah, from uh, from egg to smolt. And obviously we're going to identify the uh, the different stages in the hatchery later on, yeah. Great, a really great fact. And hopefully we'll be able to yeah, continue the, the learning on from, from, from then when Absolutely. we go into yeah. the hatchery. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get one more fact from Park School Federation. Tops. Tops. Salmon producing countries are Norway, Scotland, Canada and Chile. Oh great, oh, this is a really good fact. So the top um, salmon producing countries are Norway, Scotland, uh, Canada and Chile. That is absolutely correct. Yeah. Yes. We have yep. got some buddy well experts, done. Yes, haven't yes, we? absolutely. Well done. Great facts, children. I, I think it's time we learn a little bit more about where we are now. So, Stephen, why is this part of the North Atlantic so good for farming salmon? Well, as I said earlier, the, the energy that the, the waters have, you know, the strong currents produce you know, the pristine water conditions and just perfect for growing salmon. Yeah. Fabulous. So just out here is where the salmon go when they are ready um, and they have their sort of uh, life out at, out at sea. Yes. They're kept in pens though, aren't they? They are. They are, they are kept in pens, uh, different sizes of pens, we've, uh, which will hold different uh, numbers of fish. You know, so anything from 20,000 to, to 50,000 fish, you know, so. Fabulous. Yeah. Well, we just we just saw the pens just then. Once they're out there, do you just have to go and feed them? Is there anything else you have to do to the pens? Well, generally we we are just uh, we we go out to site and we're, we're monitoring all the time. We have uh, cameras subsurface uh, that that we see the fish and uh, generally we, we'll do sort of health checks on them uh, sort of daily. To Fabulous. be honest, yeah. So like a giant fish tank. Absolutely, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. It's a giant fish tank. <laughs> Great stuff. Well, let's find out more about these fabulous floating pens now and the salmon that live inside them as well. Here's a short video. Life on a salmon farm. A salmon is a large fish 
that can live in the sea and in fresh water. As they grow from an egg to a fully mature fish, they have different names. Alevin, fry, par, and smolt. When they're fully mature, they have silver scales with black speckles on their back and can grow to be around one metre long. Other fish in the same family as salmon are trout and char. These fish are all farmed for us to eat. For most of their lives, farmed salmon live in the sea, in floating pens like this one. A floating pen is a bit like an upside-down circus tent. The pen protects salmon from predators from above, such as seagulls, and predators from below, such as seals. The number of fish that can live in a floating pen depends on how big it is. In this floating pen, there are about 30,000 salmon, but some bigger pens can have up to 60,000 salmon. As you can see, salmon aren't the only fish that live in the floating pen. Cleaner fish are farmed alongside the salmon and have a very important job to do. They eat the sea lice and algae that might otherwise harm or irritate the salmon. This is called biological control, which means the farmer has found a natural way to deter pests that could harm the salmon. Feeding so many fish is a big and technical job. Feed barges like this one contain all of the food. And special computer technology is used to make sure exactly the right amount is distributed into the water as evenly as possible. The food travels from the barge into the pen through pipes like this and is released into the water at different points for the salmon to eat. The farmers have to be careful to get this right so that all the salmon get fed an equal amount and also to avoid wasting the food. Making sure the salmon are healthy is an important part of the farmer's job. To check how they are doing, a special monitoring device is lowered into the water, like this. Special software, programmed into the device, records information about every single salmon that swims through, letting the farmer know all kinds of things about the fish, including its length, breadth, size, weight, and condition. The salmon will live in this marine environment for up to two years, before they are taken to be made into the foods that we eat. And did you know that each salmon will swim about 1,500 kilometers while it lives in the floating pen? That's the same as you swimming from the Isle of Mull in Scotland to Land's End in Cornwall and back again. Welcome back, we hope you enjoyed that. Now, as you can see, we have moved. Um, Stephen, where are we? We are now within the confines of the hatchery. This is where we uh, will start the rearing process from, from egg through to the, the smolt, the end product. Yeah. Fantastic. So there are no eggs here at the moment, though, are there? No, it's the wrong time for, for eggs. Eggs are, are generally uh, laid in November and fertilised, and then it's just a three month gestation period before they, before they hatch. Yeah. Okay, where do the eggs come from as well to start with? Oh, the eggs, we, we get our eggs from Norway. So, they, so once they're fertilised, within two days they're put on a plane and taken here and go into to one of the sheds here. Yeah. Fabulous stuff. So when they hatch, they turn into things Once they hatch, they, yes, <laughs> they, they, they turn into what we call alevin. Uh, the, the fish at this stage are, are born with yolk sacs which they'll feed on for up to eight weeks and uh, the development stage after that is to fry which we see on uh, in this tank here. It's crazy to think that these are salmon because they look nothing like salmon do at the end of the process. No I mean we, we see we think of salmon as the king of fish you know and at this moment they, they, they don't look anything like yeah. uh, 
Like so how long ugly duckling, you know? would it take from them to grow from this stage, from the fry stage, to this stage? Well, we, we have the, the fry stage, which then sort of uh, grow to par and, and then to smolt. And that whole process is about 40 weeks. So there's one more stage between uh, this size fish and this size yes. fish called par that we haven't got here. And then That's this right. is a smolt size. This is a smolt. These, these fish are ready to go to sea now. So they'll, they'll go, um, they'll be picked up generally by well boat and transferred out to the cages. And uh, they'll be in the cages generally oh. for about 18 months to two years. Now they look a bit different because uh, the fry have kind of stripes, like tiger stripes on them. And then when we look at the smolt, smolt they look completely different. There's no stripes on them anymore. No, as they develop and get closer to the size that we're looking for, we start to add salt to the water and then actually lose the par marks and become silvery, bars of silver as, as we recognise salmon as, as salmon. And that's when you know it's time for, and that's for them it. to go to yes, sea. Yes, we know then. Fabulous. Well, <coughs> yep. I hope you've got your passports, fishes, because you're, <laughs> you're off to sea soon. Yep. Um, and we saw in the video as well, it's quite a sophisticated process to um, feed the fish, isn't it? And I'm guessing you don't feed all these different sizes the same fish for no, food. No, no. We have a range of, of diets here. Um, we have what we would feed to the, to the alvin is this sort of dust. And as, as they progress to fry, then, then we have this size of pellet progressing on as, as they get bigger. For one kilo fish, we have six and a half, nine mil, and then 12 mil to finish with. Fabulous, you know, so these are the big daddies that are pretty is, much ready yeah. to so. be caught. Okay, fantastic. Well, can uh, I feed the fish? Oh, Would that be yes, okay? Absolutely. Are they hungry? Yeah. So we feed for the fry. Okay. We'll just take a All wee right, nip lovely. of that. Yep. And so what is inside this fish food then, Stephen? Is it, uh, it's got a special ingredient? Well, the main is, is fish meal and uh, fish oils, you know, and we, we try to mimic what uh, the fish would would have in the wild. But uh, say we, I think we I should that. feed these. I don't want to leave these out. So yeah, we'll, which one hungry. shall I pop into this one? For this one, we'll take a, a two mil diet. Okay. Yep. Okay, let's go. There we go. I think you feed them nice and regularly, don't you? Because they are not that hungry. I think, I'm thinking they've had a meal, yeah. Unlike our film crew when it's lunchtime. <laughs> so I'm guessing they're not kept in, uh, in tanks here, are they, when they're on the farm? So where are they kept, Stephen? On, uh, when, on the farm? Yeah, where, where are they kept when they're here? Oh, when they're here, we, we have tanks in, uh, in this main building here that uh, we start the stages Can we go in. and take a look? Yeah, so. Yeah. yeah. Show us the way. So we just need to dip our feet first. All right, let's dip the feet just in. Why are we doing this for? This is just for, to prevent bacteria. Okay. Uh, wow, so coming in. this place is pretty amazing. What happens in here? Well, this is where all the, uh, the fish are kept uh, mm -hmm. when, when, they, when they hatch first. So we have nine tanks here that uh, will hold approximately or can hold up to 100,000 of the small alvin you know? and we, we have some here in let's the, take a look then the tank. Yeah. yeah wow so there are a lot of alvin in there how many would you say was inside this one tank and this one's about 40,000 40,000 yeah. that's fantastic and is it just normal water that's inside there this is fresh water yes it comes from the river that runs past the farm and it's pumped up and treated so this is pure sterile water it's very very clean yeah. don't get better than this and so what is this um, metal arm doing well, this metal arm as you see is, is the feeder there's a, a silo there where the feed goes in and there's a screw within that cowling that will draw the food and there's holes that just sprinkle the the feed in small bursts every so sort of two three minutes wow that's you know. amazing so there's no there's no hand feeding, no one has to set an alarm and come here to feed the fish. <laughs> Nothing at all, no, it's, it's, uh, it's quite a simple it's, job, really. Yeah, yeah. quite yeah. a high tech though. So but how yes. long would they stay in here before they have to be moved to a, a bigger tank? In here, we're, we're probably looking about uh, 12 weeks till they grow to the size that they need to be transferred to another tank, a bigger tank. And so how long in all will they be in tanks? In tanks, generally at about, I'd say, 40 weeks, you okay. know, so uh, just short of a year great stuff well yeah. we're learning so much about salmon 
I think we should give the children an opportunity to ask you uh, a few questions. Yep. So uh, let's go over to Park School Federation now and see if Miss Chapman's class has any questions. Why do we have some of them when they are fish in the sea? That is such a good question. Let me ask Stephen for you. So Stephen, why do we have salmon farms when there are fish in the sea? We, well, we have the salmon farms. Unfortunately, with the, the wild fish diminishing, uh, we have to try and protect them as much as possible. And for us all to enjoy salmon, we have to have the farms. And uh, the, the product the farms give you is, is really good, second to none. You wouldn't know the difference, I don't think. Fabulous. I hope that answered your question for you. Let's get another question now. Let's go back over to Miss Chapman's class. Do you have to go out on a boat to catch the salmon? What a really, really good question. Let me find out for you. Do you have to go on a boat to catch the salmon? Yes. For when, when, we, uh, uh, when the fish are ready, we'll take a boat out uh, onto the farm and we'll crowd the, the fish in the pens and the boat will suck fish from the, from the pens into whales, so fish whales, so they're kept live in this boat. It's like, it's like a big flume, you know, oh. and then the swimming pool, the fish love it, they just swim So they up. don't get hurt, they just get sucked they, up? And... They don't get hurt at all, you oh. know, it's a, it's, it's a really jo enjoyable experience. I think if you were a fish. You know. <laughs> yeah. Fabulous stuff, great questions. Let's see if we can get some more great questions. Let's go to Wood Green Junior now and see if Miss Passmore's class have any. Do you like your job and how did you become a salmon farmer? What a great question. Let me ask for you. So Stephen, do you like your job and how did you become a salmon farmer? <laughs> That's a good question. I <laughs> love my job. I absolutely love it. I've, uh, 27 years I've been doing this job and so just my enthusiasm for it never wanes. I, I was brought up by the sea and actually fished for salmon in the summers. So when salmon farming started, uh, it's natural progression for me to, to go there. I love it, absolutely love it. I can see with a big smile on your face yeah, that uh, you do yeah. enjoy your job. Yeah. Okay, let's get uh, one more question. Let's go back over to Wood Green Junior. What is the biggest fish you've ever caught? What a really, really good question. Let me find out for you. So, what is the biggest fish you've ever caught, Stephen? <laughs> you're shaming, tell, you're tell shaming me truth, here. Tell the truth, tell the truth. I, fishing, the biggest fish I've caught is maybe this size. Are you sure it isn't that size? Well, uh, <laughs> you know how that goes. But uh, growing on a farm, the biggest fish we've grown is Maybe about that size, really big. Too big for a box. Fabulous. That would so. take quite a lot of, of eating, wouldn't a lot it, of meals. really? A lot of meals. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. Great questions. And we'll have an opportunity to ask Stephen some questions a little later on. We've got a video coming up, but um, first of all, we have got some more Alvin to just uh, pop in here, haven't we? we? Have, so, yes. do you want to go? Can I do, do it? You can do it, yes, certainly. Quite exciting. There we go. Just. Whoa. There we go. So these are just, just going to be added in. Just lower it down as close to the water. Right, a little bit closer. Yep. Wow, look. Go meet your friends. There you go. Whee! Fantastic. Superb. Oh, there we go. Let's wash it out. <laughs> Make sure they're all. There we go. They'll be much happier in there, won't yes, they? Yes, definitely. Yeah, and there, we're this friends. is like a humongous sea to them in there, isn't it? It's That's a big, great. <laughs> a big family. <laughs> yeah. Fabulous. Okay, time for another short video now, and this is all about what happens to the salmon once they leave the farm. Salmon from farm to fork. When the salmon are about two years old, it's time for them to enter the food chain. They are transferred from the floating pen in the sea into a well boat, like this one. Being moved from the floating pen can be slightly stressful for the salmon. So once they are inside the well boat, the temperature of the water inside is gently cooled, which makes them feel more relaxed. Next, they are transported by the well boat to a processing factory. 
inside the well boat. A flow of water is created and the fish follow the flow of water up pipes like these. The pipes lead the salmon to the harvesting station, where a machine stuns and kills them almost instantly. Once this has happened, the fish then go straight into a tank of ice and water, which is below 2 degrees Celsius. It's important to keep the water this cold, so that the fish are kept as fresh as possible. The whole fish are then transferred to another part of the processing plant, where the insides are removed by a machine. These are not wasted, but taken away to be used as fish meal, which is used to feed other kinds of farmed fish, such as sea bass and sea bream. The salmon are now ready to be taken on to the next part of the process. the sides of salmon are being portioned into smaller pieces. The temperature inside the factory is kept nice and cold, so that the salmon stays fresh. Once the whole salmon and the salmon fillets have been packaged and labelled, they are loaded onto a refrigerated lorry like this one and delivered to your local store, ready for you to buy and then enjoy for your dinner. Welcome back children. Now so far we've learnt so much about salmon. We've learnt about the different stages of their lives, how they live and how they're turned into food, the food that we eat. Um, I think it's time now that we have a few more questions for you Stephen. So yeah. let's go over to Larchwood Primary to see if Mrs Menzies class has any questions. My question is, is salmon that is caught in the wild better for you than salmon from a farm? What a really great question. So Stephen, can you tell us, is salmon that is um, uh, grown in the wild, is it better for you than salmon that is um, grown up on a farm? I would have said, if you'd asked me that 10 years ago, I would have said yes. But now, with the, the quality of feed and, uh, and the diet that they're on, nobody would be able to tell the difference between salmon and wild fish. Great, Just, that's great. Let's go back over to Larchwood Primary to see if we have another, another question from Mrs Menzies class. Um, my question is, how big, big can salmon grow and do you eat all of the fish? What a really, really good question. So how big can salmon grow and do we eat all the parts of the fish? Well, uh, salmon, salmon we, we grow fish to about five kilo, yeah, and uh, we can eat almost yeah, almost all of the fish we can, we can eat, yeah. We'll be looking yeah. at all the different parts in a moment, yeah. won't we? <laughs> uh, really great questions there from Larchwood Primary. Let's go to the Avenue Primary now to see if Mr Pennock's class have any questions. There are many types of wild salmon, which variety do you farm? Fantastic, what a great question. So there are many types of salmon, so which variety do you farm? We are solely Atlantic salmon. So there's no co coho or Pacific, you know, obviously we can't grow Pacific, but uh, no, Atlantic salmon, best for you. I was going to say, can you taste the difference when you try different types of salmon? I, I don't know. I, I couldn't honestly... Because you don't eat anything I, other than your own. That's, <laughs> that's great. quite correct, yes. Great stuff. Really great question there. Um, and let's go over and get just the final one from Mr Pennock's class. Uh, out of thousands of salmon eggs which are hatched only 10 weeks adulthood, how does this compare with farm salmon? That's a really, really good question. So out of, a few, out of all the eggs that are laid um, in, in the sea, only a few make salmon when, when we're talking about wild salmon. But how does that compare to farming salmon? 
farming side, we, we've got a high, a high yield from, from the eggs. We, generally, we're looking about 85 to 90 percent. We would expect to, to go through to this size. Oh, great stuff! Yeah. So it's a, a bigger, much bigger success rate. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, great yeah. stuff. Really, really great questions today, children. Thank you so much for those. I think it's about time we found out a little bit more about how we enjoy to eat salmon now, because um, we eat it in so many different ways. Uh, there's don't we, so many different ways. We have, uh, well, we have on on this board here. Uh, a couple of examples we have the sushi which is raw fish uh, which is prepared in japan do not try this at kids at home kids do not try to cut up a salmon and just eat it it's prepared uh, this is specifically for for this market uh, we have fillets of salmon as you can see there we have smoked salmon which is my personal favorite and uh, this is salmon that is is hung and smoked it's, it's called uh, curing and uh, lovely say my personal favorite yes we have the tin salmon which i think everybody everybody knows what tin salmon and flaked hot smoked flaked salmon which is lovely as well delicious it's, goes through the same curing uh, curing process but with additives maybe honey or something added to it as well you know it's, okay. it's and really we have nice the main man himself oh, the here. Main man, yes um it's crazy to think that all these different types of food come from um this fish but can you talk us through the little dif the different parts yeah well you can see how how streamlined the fish is you know and uh the fin formation you know which helps them swim in the in the strong currents we've also got the wee gap here this is where the gills where the fish breathe from um yeah and essentially and that's it's it big. it's obviously very silvery there's <laughs> thousands and thousands of silvery uh, scales there um, yeah yeah so it's amazing it just makes all these different types of food i love smoked salmon also another one of my favorites is um making um fish fingers out of salmon oh it tastes really lovely and yeah. children you should have all the ingredients in your classroom to make your very own salmon fish fingers and if you do give it a go we'd love to hear from you love to uh hear how it tastes and perhaps you can send us some pictures <laughs> that'd be really great I'll send us some <laughs> <laughs> send us some yeah i'll <laughs> be quite hungry yeah. um and also children it's important to remember Remember that salmon is, is very tasty, but it's also good for you too as well. It's a high source of protein, which is good to keep your bones and your muscles nice and healthy as well. Um, we often refer to a salmon as an oily fish as well, don't we, Stephen? Yes, we do. Yeah. Well, there's salmon and mackerel are, are both sort of classified as oily fish, and uh, this is because they they're a good source of omega-3 oils, which we we use now in in uh, sort of healthy healthy diets. You know great stuff well thank you so much for teaching us about salmon today my pleasure we have learned so much there's just enough time to go back to all of our schools and find out what you've learned so let's head over to park school federation now to see what what uh, miss chapman's class have learned we have learned about fresh water and salt water and how salmon can adapt to both fantastic that's a really great fact that they've learned today so they've learned that um that salmon can adapt to both salt water and fresh water. Yeah, just amazing. Absolutely they amazing. Both. Yeah. They're amazing fish. Yes, they uh, are. Great learning children. Let's go over to Wood Green Junior now to see what Miss Pasco's class, Pasmo, Pasmo's class has learned. I learned that machines feed salmon. That's a really good fact. So he's learned that the machines feed the salmon. Yes, they do. Yes, they're yeah. uh, computerized machines, which uh, allow exactly the right amount of feed to, to go into the, into the fish. Yeah. Great stuff, I could do with one of those, Good my goldfish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's go to Larchwood Primary School now and see um, what Mrs Menzies class has learned today. Today I have learned that some pens can have up to 60,000 salmons in. That's really great learning. So some of the pens have up to 60,000 salmon inside yeah. them. Yes, it's, it's quite amazing to even picture that in your head, you know, you go, wow. But, you know, the, there's, there's lots of water for them to swim. And, that's know, one so big fish tank. That, that's one <laughs> big fish tank. And lots yeah. of salmon for us to eat. <laughs> um, great learning. Let's finally go over to the Avenue Primary School now. I have learned that the salmon's intestines are used to feed other fishes and what a wonderful place the Isle of Mull is. Fabulous stuff. Um, so she's learned that the insides of the salmon are used to feed other fish. Yes. And what a wonderful place the Isle of Mull is. 
Ab where we are it's today. Stunning, absolutely stunning. <laughs> it really you know, is. It's a great place to work. I know. It's almost know, time it's... to go home, and I don't think I want to go home. I want to stay <laughs> well, here. I don't, well, you're very welcome to stay here. Thank yeah. you very much. <gasps> okay, children, it is time for us to say goodbye from this beautiful island of Mull. If you'd like to take part in our next online field trip, we're going to be in St Albans on the 7th of May, and we're going to be learning all about peppers that time around. So don't forget to uh, tune into that one. And if you'd like to take part in a farm to fork school field trip don't forget to sign up for that the address is on the screen right now it is really lots of fun um, you can see the children there just getting stuck in and just laughing and having lots and lots of fun and learning too as well but for myself and Stephen from the Isle of Mull it's goodbye bye <laughs> goodbye Park School Federation <laughs> goodbye Wood Green Junior Goodbye, lots of primary. And goodbye, the Avenue Primary School. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.